Good morning. Welcome to our service of matins from St Peter and St Paul Nutfield. I'm the Reverend Phaedra Pamphilon Green and I'm the Rector here and at St Mary's in Bletchingley. We begin our service by singing, My God, how wonderful thou art. <laughs> moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father but confess them with an humble lowly penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy and although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands. To set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are with me this morning, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant our most merciful Father for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Now, Psalm this morning is Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, the first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 to 6. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock, whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit, whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Here endeth the first lesson. And now we join the congregation in singing the Te Deum. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, oh, sorry, really, she had. Tell what, what? Oh, because I've got cobwebs on that one. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Here endeth the second lesson. And so we say the jubilate together. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so we affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. 
O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And so the collect for this, the eleventh Sunday after Trinity. O God, who declarest thy almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises, and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all the sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our anthem this morning is Greater Love. Mm -hmm.
Oh, let us pray. Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies to you. You give us life, you give us love and you give us yourself. May we give our lives, our love, ourselves to you. We pray for the unity of your church, that we may work together for the good of all. We give thanks for the gifts you have given to us. Let us use them to your glory. We pray especially for all who exercise the gifts of ministry, teaching and healing. We pray for all people that their talents and abilities may be able to be used. We ask you to bless each in their vocation and their work. We remember those who have been made redundant and the unemployed. We pray for those whose work is dull and mechanical. And we remember all those whose talents are wasted and thwarted. Bless our homes with holiness and hospitality, with cheerfulness and kindliness, with generosity and with goodness. We pray for our loved ones, our neighbours and our friends, the communities to which we belong and the places where we work. We pray for all who suffer through the cruelty of others, for all who have no confidence in themselves or in the world. We pray for all who find making relationships difficult. And we remember the lonely and those who have been rejected or betrayed. We pray for all who are in trouble, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks for all who have been strengthened by their faith, for all who have died in faith. We give thanks for those who we have loved and see no more. We pray for them and we pray for all those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Lord, grant us with them a share in your heavenly kingdom. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, who likes the programme, Who Do You Think You Are? I love it because I've spent my whole life wondering where my name comes from. Now, people used to think that I was foreign when I was a child, and it was rather nice to pretend that perhaps I was from somewhere very exotic, and that maybe I, you know, I came from wild, wonderful places. But when I started to look at the Pamphylon name, my Pamphylon name, I found that in fact the first Pamphylon came to England in 1250 from Spain, from Pamplona. And they were importing iron ore into Colchester. So after 800 years, I think we're probably English now. Now my mother's maiden name is Bacchus. And that proved to be a bit more exotic, actually. French Huguenot silk weavers. Now in the programme, Who Do You Think You Are?, there are sometimes surprises for people searching their family history. Some are saddened by conditions their relatives have went through, and others are angry at the things their relatives have done. Sometimes a relative is found that had the same occupation as the researcher, and I had to go back to 1310 
to find out that one of my ancestors was the second vicar of Thaxted, so it's in the blood somewhere. Yet if I'm asked who am I, who I am, I don't answer, oh, I came from a long line of silk weavers. The answer usually depends on who is asking or the context in which the person is asking. I always find it interesting when I take a funeral. Now, who was that person who I'm, I'm burying? How can I get a real measure of who that person was? and give an account, a good account of their life and so that I could celebrate their life and I really take it very seriously. Now at my aunt's funeral, she was mum, auntie M, Emily, Emma, Emmy and all those names carried a very different character. She was a complex individual to say the least but I loved her dearly. Then again, aren't we all a bit complex somewhere along the line? So I wanted to ask this question, what defines you? Is it your job? Is it your gender, your family, your nationality or your faith? Young people seem to of trying to work out who they are to their friends but now they have social media and they have to try and work out who they are on there but also that that changes but the photographs and everything that they've put on there have stay the same stay there for everyone to see so it's not quite so easy to just change and I think it's good in some ways but it's also confusing this concept of authentic identity. Who am I? Who are you? In our gospel today, Jesus asks, who do people say I am? But he doesn't say I, he says the son of man. He uses that expression to describe himself. And in Aramaic, the phrase son of man means human being. But Jesus uses the term to describe himself and his mission. So here is Jesus asking, who do people say this human being is standing here in front of you? What, do, what does everybody else say that this human being is? Now the disciples reply that People think that Jesus is one of the prophets returned. Okay, says Jesus, well, what do the crowd say? The general public think I am. That's what they think I am, but what about you? Who do you, my closest friends, think that I am? as Messiah and he's the, the king from the line of David expected by the Jews. They have a family tree again, isn't it? But it's also pointed to a fulfillment, the one God promised to restore to his people. Now Peter also adds, son of the living God, meaning that Jesus was the same as God and alive. In other words, you are the anointed, the king, the one who we have waited for. You are God and the one true and living God. What a, what a way to describe the person that was standing in front of him. Peter recognises Jesus' true 
identity. Do we? How do we describe Jesus? Who do we say he is? Jesus calls us to recognise his true God-filled identity and then to respond to it. As Peter found out, recognising Jesus transforms us and brings clarity to our own identity and calling. We can't recognise Jesus' real identity as God without being challenged to consider who we really are too. You see, as soon as we go beyond acknowledging Jesus as a real person who lived 2,000 years ago and did good things, as soon as we believe that he was also God with us, then we are challenged to respond by considering what that means to us and who we are, who we are called to be. Jesus tells Peter who he is. He says, you are called the rock. Peter is still Simon, son of Jonah, but he is now blessed. And a person who is called and blessed has the capacity to be and to represent so much more than just themselves. Yet, whatever global stage they are called to, the person remains flesh and blood, a person living in relationship to others. Simon Peter is not a simple one-dimensional character with only one function in the Christian story. The rock of the church still denied Jesus three times before discovering the, the conviction to witness even into, unto death. But when Simon discovered he was also Peter, the rock, he was beginning to discern his life's purpose, his vocation. And so this morning, what is your vocation? What is your purpose? Peter, the rock on which the church is founded, gives himself totally to the service of the church, but he is also directed beyond the church to work on earth, establishing God's way amongst humanity. Whatever we are called to do, or whatever we're called to do for the church, we also live in the world and are called to make God's ways known here on earth, not just to keep it to ourselves. Our faith might be private, but it's also public. In our society, we tend to be suspicious of public figures speaking of their faith, but Christians are nonetheless called to witness in this world. Most politicians try and keep their faith out of their politics, but surely their faith must influence it, mustn't it? I don't see how we can hide who we are as people of faith. Whatever faith we have, it will influence how we relate to the world around us. As Christians, informed by the church that nurtures all of us, we must all speak of God's care and purpose for and to all people, whether at work, school or at pleasure. So how do you talk about Jesus to people outside? Often it's us Christians who hold back and are afraid to tell others about our faith for because we're frightened that people might think we're a bit pushy or Bible bashers or something. Yet many people are actually very interested to know what and why Christians believe what they do. It's the Christians who seem to be afraid to speak out. 
When you think about how Jesus shapes your life, can you condense those thoughts to just one word for each aspect? Meditate on those words so that they become part of you. And when that subject becomes, comes up in conversation, testify to your experience of Jesus. Now tell others about him, what he does for you. So this morning, I want you to think about who do you think you are? What has informed you, shaped you, nurtured you? How would you describe who you are to others? My father-in-law was adopted and he doesn't want to know his birth family very much because he says what's more important is that he's been adopted into God's family as God's son. And this is what defines him, describes him, influences and shapes him. Can you say the same? Amen. Our final hymn is one that praises God in all the world for all that he has done for us and has been recorded virtually by our choir at the name of Jesus. Thank you.